It's Monday, July 3rd, 2023, your day weather podcast being brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com. Well, it's been a pretty decent 4th of July weekend period so far with warm temperatures, lots of sunshine, been a little bit of thunderstorm activity, but it certainly has not been nearly as widespread as it's been. But there will be some natural fireworks coming, especially in the northern areas. For you folks in northern Wyoming, parts of southern Montana into the Dakotas today, then showers and thunderstorms will be shifting more into the southern parts of the central and southern Rockies as we head into the 4th of July tomorrow. So we are going to have a little bit of natural firework activity with those thunderstorms as a cool front is going to be moving in on Tuesday. and This is going to bring the risk of severe weather. There is some severe weather possible later today and tonight in those northern areas. Some severe weather possible Tuesday afternoon and evening shifting further south. And it will be cooler behind the cold front. So yes, it has gotten a little bit warmer, but we are for the central and northern Rockies and the northern plains actually looking at the first 10 days of July being cooler than average as we see some cooler air settling into the nation's midsection and parts of the west. While other parts of the west, the desert southwest, California, finally seeing some summertime heat coming our, our way. Active thunderstorm activity again in some areas leading to some great photos coming on in. Just beautiful photos from the thunderstorms that have developed over the last several weeks. And just beautiful shots with the green from the rain. And uh, boy, the rain really making things green all across the western United States. More green than it's been in many, many years this late into the season. Here we are July and a lot of the region still very, very green. But it's starting to heat up, heat up Lake Havasu City here. Temperature there in the shade. We are finally seeing some heat after one of the coolest Junes on record in Las Vegas. And a very cool June for California and many areas of the West. Temperatures now finally starting to get a little bit warmer. As we take a look at the satellite photos this morning, you can see an area of thunderstorm activity that's up into Montana, heading the Dakotas that developed late yesterday and went into the overnight hours. But really pretty quiet conditions being shown elsewhere. And this is because of high pressure and some drier, warmer air coming on in and settling things down a bit. But right here, we've got a trough of low pressure over north central areas of Canada that's dragging behind it. Right here is some cooler air behind this line, a cold front. And this is going to be swinging south and east throughout the course of today into the 4th of July tomorrow. Now, out ahead of it, this high is helping to build heat into the west. That's why it's gotten hot in Havasu City and back into the far parts of the southwestern United States and some of that heat coming into the Rockies. But this cold front will kind of close the door on this high for a bit. And as the front approaches today, you can see the colder weather up into Canada, moving into Montana and northern Wyoming. You can see how the orange, the warmer temperatures, are pretty predominant elsewhere. But we've got a pretty good contrast of colder air coming in behind this cold front. So that's going to set off some thunderstorms today. So across northeastern Wyoming, southern Montana, across South Dakota, parts of North Dakota, into the upper Midwest, that's where the activity is going to be today. We could late this afternoon and evening, and as I'll show you, even into the overnight hours, there's going to be some severe weather up along that I-90 corridor area. So that's the area to watch out for the strong thunderstorms developing today. And you can see those areas of showers and thunderstorms from eastern Idaho, Yellowstone Park, Jackson, far western areas of Wyoming, then eastward along that I-90 corridor across northeastern Wyoming into South Dakota, then elsewhere into the Midwest with generally isolated showers and thunderstorms elsewhere. So that's where the action is going to be this afternoon and evening. But look what happens as we head into the night. A kind of a concentrated area of thunderstorms from near Billings there, east across the Montana-Wyoming border in the Dakotas, and then even into tomorrow morning, those showers and thunderstorms will linger. Now, this is by noon tomorrow. The trough in Canada advances towards Hudson Bay. This will take the cold front across the region during the day tomorrow. So this is going to shift the severe weather more south and east. 
and there you can see where the thunderstorms are going to be. Look at that delineation right there. Sharp contrast between the drier air in the Dakotas behind the front. And then we're going to have a, an outbreak of severe weather right along the front here. And also southern Wyoming, front range of Colorado, eastern Colorado. There's going to be some severe weather in these areas here. Then going down into the southern plains. The monsoon slowly beginning to work its way a little bit closer out of Mexico to the southwest United States, but it's not there yet. And this is where the severe weather threat is going to be tomorrow. There is likely going to be some enhanced severe weather threat, especially in this yellow area tomorrow afternoon and evening. So if you're going to a fireworks display here in the yellow areas, hopefully the thunderstorms will be over by then. But that yellow area and the darker green area you need to watch out for some strong thunderstorms on the 4th of July tomorrow. And then that front will progress east, causing a lot of severe weather in the Great Lakes and the Midwest by Wednesday. And that'll be causing some other problems for travel across the United States with this front causing a lot of active weather. And there it is. So this is by Wednesday. So you can see that shift as the front heads south, bringing the severe weather more to the south. Drier air, though, will come in, but also cooler air for Wednesday into the northern areas. And look at this. These are the temperature anomalies for Wednesday. Look at those temperatures east of the divide, along the front range, out into the plains and into the northern plains. So pretty cool air for this time of year coming in behind that front. So temperatures will be noticeably cooler on Wednesday. As we get into Friday, a more westerly zonal flow begins to develop west to east. And what that will do is bring moderating temperatures, but it's also going to bottle up the heat into Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. The clockwise flow, though, is going to eventually bring up some of that higher humidity air. And I think next week, this weekend and next week, is when we'll start to see the monsoon thunderstorms show up in the southwestern United States as that monsoon will finally get going. But with the jet stream fairly depressed south for this time of year, that's going to keep temperatures on the whole. This is the 10-day temperature anomaly. If you add up the next 10 days, the temperature anomalies show central Canada and the central United States back into front range areas still on the whole cooler than average, while the heat, the summer heat, has finally gotten the southwestern United States, the Pacific Northwest, and the West, and continued very warm in the South. Happy Independence Day, everybody, and enjoy it. Watch out for those thunderstorms. We'll see you next on Wednesday.